Blah, y'all already know what it is, your boy, y'all call what it do, the Outlet to Reality, the oldest podcast in Vegas and Chicago, what up, this is the place where you want to hide from your drama, or maybe hide from your baby mama, <laughs> just kidding, and anyways guys, si tu quieres cambiar tu vida, if you want to change your life, then subscribe, Cha-ching! and by the way guys, I just published my first book, book called Shabbat in Chicago, and it's out on Amazon, and it's about an audacious single mom who opens her heart and home to five adopted kids. So please, guys, check it out. And today we have a very, very special guest. You, you. I had to bring her back. This is her third time being on the show. Not only is she a TikToker, she's a dancer. She's also a DJ. And she's an actress. Give it up for the one and only Bella. Hi, how are you? I'm doing good, girl. I'm so happy to have you. You don't know how excited I am to have my favorite superstar in the building. (laughs) Thank you. I'm so happy to be back. Thank you for having me. Of course, of course. Now, look, I want to tell a little story about what happened to me this past weekend. So I basically flew out to um, Annapolis, Maryland. First time I came with my mom and we stayed like probably the most expensive hotel ever. And the crazy thing is get there. Everybody's dressed up. You could tell they have a lot of money. And my mom was like, look, you you got the right pants, khaki, but you got to have a nice, you know, top. And my mom, was at my friend's spot she was already you know eating out so I I couldn't get to her room so I'm like dang so what I did was I went to the you know the hotel little store got myself a polo (laughs) yeah you know put the button down I was looking good right but the funny thing is because the polo has like the little hotel logo I'm walking out and I see somebody come up to me he's like hey sir can you bring me three towels for room 210? I go, right away, sir, right away. (laughs) So I played along, but it's funny because the crazy thing is my mom and I were like the only Latinos that are staying at this hotel. Everyone else that are Latinos, they're actually like either the the room service, the, the housekeeper, but they weren't staying in. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to make it out of comedy. So watch this. So we go to a restaurant, right? Nice restaurant. I recommend it called Iron Rooster. Got the best burgers. So we get there, right? This guy who's the greeter, he goes, hey, hey, dude, you work at that hotel? I'm like, yeah. He's like, I heard y'all getting bought out. Is that true? I said, look, man, I'm under contract. I can't really talk about it, but I appreciate you doing your homework. <laughs> He goes, he goes, man, I have to, man, here, I got you. I'm going to get you a nice table. He got me a nice table. The waitress comes in, right? Really young, pretty woman. She comes in. She tells me, you work at the hotel? I'm like, "Uh, yeah. She goes, my brother too. I'm like, no way. (laughs) So it's just crazy how within 10 seconds or five minutes, I became a true local like no lie and it was all like i was testing my acting skills now here's the thing people right away they probably you know they put me like in the little box right but instead of taking it personal i made it as a comedy so i had to share that but that was like what happened to me funny stuff but what about you bella anything happened to you this week that that really like stood out I've just been working. Uh, I don't know if there's, I mean, everything kind of blurs together. <laughs> I've been doing so much um, and such little sleep. It kind of just all feels like one big blur. But I did get to play Wednesday Adams this week, which was super fun. Please do tell, do tell. <laughs> well, well, what's the, what's the, uh, I, I, I saw a little clip. But I couldn't see it fully because I was one of the, you know, I had a phone, so I could, I wasn't there. You know what I'm saying? But tell us what how was it like? Well, well, if you could share a little bit about it. 
It was super fun. So basically, um, like a local group of people that are just really passionate about like producing, making things, filmmakers. Uh, his name is Alex and he recreates a whole bunch of like famous scenes from movies. And for Halloween, he's doing, I think, one video a day. So a different scene from different horror or like spooky movies. Uh, so we filmed a few weeks ago uh, the Scream 5 intro remake and I played Jenna um tara i believe the character's name is and uh it was super fun i love ghostface and then this week we did the famous like dance scene from the raven from the new wednesday show at wednesday adams and that was fun uh i feel like the scream was a little bit more out of my comfort zone believe it or not i felt like the like wednesday dancing was a little bit more natural which i was pretty surprised about i thought i was gonna be like maybe a little bit nervous, like, oh my gosh, I'm doing these weird ass dances in front of everyone. <laughs> but it was really not bad. It was a lot of fun. Wow, that's amazing, girl. Look at you, man. I, it's crazy how, you know, no lie, you've been one of my like first, first, earliest guests I've ever had when I first started here. And it's crazy how much you've grown and how much you've done so many things now. Like, I saw you were in this film and I have to pick at you because if I'm not mistaken, Bella happened to be one of the main characters, right? In this new yes. film, all the stuff. <laughs> if, if you could tell us like the title of this film and your experience, because we want to know, like we, all of us that true fans that want to get into acting, we would love to hear your story. <laughs> Yes, so the the film is called First Friday. Um, it was probably one of the best things I've done in my entire life. Uh, obviously, I'm very passionate about acting. I've been doing it since I was in elementary school, um, just as a hobby. And I was fortunate enough to get casted as a lead role. The character's name is Vanessa. Um, she's just i don't even know how i would describe her she's like a mean girl am i allowed to say no no words on here <laughs> are they allowed <laughs> um you know we can well she's a little <laughs> witchy you know she's okay a okay crazy. um but it's super fun it's about uh two siblings brother and sister here in las vegas and uh they're trying to make it out of the town one makes shirts and the other one has a podcast um <laughs> convenient enough and so they're trying to save up money and basically something to do with a deal drug goes south and they're like running from this dealer and a whole bunch of crazy stuff and uh the guy who's printing shirts we kind of like have our moment fall in love i want a relationship he doesn't i get hurt i don't like it uh so it's super fun hopefully it's coming out soon soon but i know it's going to be in 2024 Hopefully on Netflix. Um, the trailer should be coming out by the end of this year. So I'm so excited for that. It was so much fun. Uh, we were able to shoot an entire like solid at least like hour and a half film and like basically around a month, which is like unheard of we were doing back to back to back no breaks 12 hour plus days um it's obviously very hot here in vegas so some days it was hitting up to almost 120 and we're inside filming with no ac because you can't have the ac on while rolling because the audio and we're all like tired and hot but we're all still just having the best times of our lives and i met some really great people it was an amazing opportunity and it was just so much fun like i would totally do it again Whoa, so. that's that's so cool, man! I should have brought the popcorn. This is <laughs> this is insane, girl. Like, it's crazy because, like, I remember when you we last talked, right? We're talking about a year ago, um, and you were doing the audition, and your friends were driving you there, and it was just crazy how how look how time went by, and you got this, you know, this big project, and I'm so proud of you because. I love the consistency, right? And you're still doing stream. You're still, you know, doing a lot of stuff. Um, I saw you on television too. You were doing like the something, the bots. I, if you correct me if I'm wrong, you know, I was going to see what I'm saying. Yes, battle bots. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> there you go. See, I was close. I was close. I was, I was missing something, you know? No, but... it's pretty spot on. <laughs> 
but it's just so cool and I'm so proud of you and like I said this is a big deal and Bella like anything else that you want to happen this year because I know this you know this is big right I know you have other plans that you want can you share a little bit I know you can't share Eric Eric but if you can share a little bit, that'll, that'll mean a lot. <laughs> oh, come on. You know, I got you. Um, So, yeah, with, in the past year, I found myself getting into music. I knew I always wanted to make music, but I'm not the most, I mean, you know, we can make it work, but I'm not the the Celine Dion of the world. Okay. So I was like, we, we got to figure this out. I got into EDM. I went to my first official rave, uh, EDC 2022 fell in love with the community, the music, I really got into it. And then um, as a joke, I was like, hey, you wanna teach me how to DJ? So um, a very, very close friend that's basically a brother to me, uh, taught me how to DJ and now we're here. Uh, it was a joke, I never took it seriously. And then I got my first gig about like two months in at Player One, I had like a small residency there. Uh, and then I got booked for my first big gig, which was probably one of my biggest to date, which is still really crazy. Uh, it was the Level Up Expo pre-kickoff party convention at HyperX. Um, there was a lot of people there. Merck was there. Uh, oh. Merck Anthony. Shout out to Merck. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It was so much fun and the second I finished my set, I did not want to get off stage and I was like, I don't know what I got myself into, but like the adrenaline rush and like just the excitement and the love for it like really, really ignited like right after that. And then I just kept pushing and working and getting booked for different things. I started doing um, like private and corporate events and stuff like that. And then I was like, mm, no, I definitely like my heavy bass music, you know, uh, some headbang and stuff. So I ventured more into that. I've been going to a lot of raves, a lot of shows, supporting friends. Uh, and then I got booked to um, open for Perry Wayne at Area 15, which was last month. It was so, so much fun. It's so crazy to say that only a year into DJing, I was able to do something so crazy and big. I do have a show out of state next month and then a uh, Revelation show opening for AU5 at We All Scream in December. I have some stuff going on in California in January. Um, and basically my main goal, I mean, maybe not by the, like, obviously be great by the end of the year, but like within the near future, my goal is to get booked for an Insomniac event and maybe play like my first big festival, whether it's through Insomniac or somebody else. Uh, Excision presents all his events, super awesome. I'm finally jumping into producing. It's a very time consuming thing. So I was like kind of waiting until I got into the groove with things with this semester since I'm taking music business and some other classes to help out. Uh, so I'm finally learning to produce and I'm just so excited to see where this journey takes me because I just love it so much. And people always ask me, like, if you had to choose, would it be like acting or music? And I'm like, I I literally couldn't. Like, I have such a strong love and like passion for them both, but in such individual, like different unique ways. Like I I would not be able to pick, um, but it's just it's crazy to like think about. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. When you perform at We All Scream, you have to let me know because that's one of my favorite spots. And your boy would I dance. <laughs> I would definitely dance, get the crowd moving, you know. And I got some good suggestions. If you want some, like, dope house music, you're talking to a guy from Chicago. So I know the real old school. So let, let, me, let me share a little spill a little bit. So I saw you post it, and now this is the perfect time. You post it on your story. Please DM me, like, any recommendations, you know, songs. I got you, girl. So look at this. Your boy got two songs I highly recommend. So one of the best house music, like the original, is Stevie B. He's one of the classics from Chicago. You know, house started in Chicago. So you want to bring a little, you know, old school. Here's another one. There's a song, I can't think of the artist, but the name of the song, it's uh, I Don't Want Nobody, I Don't Want Nobody, Baby, But You. and But you can hear that beat. Dun, 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 mm -hmm. dun, dun. And it, it goes like, it gets deeper. Boom, boom. It's just so dope. But 
if you could put that in your mix, you know, do your magic, put a little spicy in it, you know, cha-ching, it's going to be wild. Because that's one thing I noticed here in, in Vegas is that there's a lot of house DJs, but they forget the, like, original, like, old school people. And if if even if there's just one, it'll still be good because it's kind of like giving back to the old school, the originals, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I, I'll definitely send it to you because I know I can't sing like them, but I'll send you like two songs so you could be like, okay, that's what David meant because I didn't know what you were saying. <laughs> <laughs> good. Yeah, for that set, I might have some bass house in there, but it's going to be um, mostly some heavy stuff kind of kind of I don't know we'll see we will see I'm still kind of figuring out that set right now I'm putting together some techno sets uh, for TwitchCon and some after parties and stuff which is uh techno is still a little bit fairly new to me so we're we're out there exploring it but I I do love it I also really like side trance more than I thought I did so yeah we'll see I did a one like house house set and that was for an EDC pre-party at Cassie Beach House. It was super fun, but it was like tropical house, which is not terrible, but it's definitely like, I love my drum and bass. I love my dubstep. I love, I love hard style too. So a lot of that heavy stuff. <laughs> oh, I know what you mean. Do, 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 do. Yeah. <laughs> I already know. I already know. I already pumped up. I'm already pumped up. But that's so cool. That's really cool. And look. I know DJ has to be like one of the most for me, like just seeing people go up there on stage. It looks kind of scary because everyone's looking at you. Do you remember your first time like actually performing as a DJ? And like, can you take us back like that moment? So um, like my first like really time, like performing, performing and doing like an actual set uh, was L Level Up Expo. Uh, I hadn't like really organized my set too much. I had kind of just put together a playlist of songs I knew I wanted to play and I hadn't like practiced the set. I just full sent it, winged it, you know, went for it. Um, at first I was so nervous. I remember my palms are like literally dripping in sweat. It sounds so gross and it like kind of is. And I'm like standing there and I'm like, there's so many people here. Like, I'm so new to this. Like, what if, what if something goes wrong? Like, this is crazy. Like, I'm so new to this and I'm here. Like, what the heck? And I start shaking and like, I very rarely get anxiety, but I was like having a, like a solid panic attack in the bathroom at HyperX. And I'm like talking to one of my best friends and I'm like, oh, I don't know if I could do this. Like, this is crazy. This is crazy. This is not happening. And she's like, you got it. You got it. And like the first like 15 minutes, I'm like definitely still like shaky. I'm all stiff up there. And then I'm like, okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna get into the music, put my headphones on. Like, we got this, we got this. And then like, after like a solid like 20 25 minutes I started like getting into it getting into my zone and getting more comfortable and then just having fun with it but it's definitely a roller coaster of emotions and it's like a high you can't find anywhere else like acting it's its own thing streaming everything but like I don't even know how to explain it it's it's crazy it's awesome it's definitely an adrenaline rush so and it's so much fun you're like music all together is just so amazing and so powerful and being able to share that with others and like make it your own in your own way is just like it's amazing it's beautiful i love it so much wow that's that's so dope you know what i do want to say like going off what you say about music how it connects people like i do feel like no matter what background what language you speak it brings us all together you know, and you're there to to make people have a fun time. So I feel like you already got the acting skills. You got the personality, you know what I'm saying? And you know how to throw down. So with the, you know, DJ set, I think that's just a nice like mix because that's the thing about you that that really makes you stand out from a lot of actresses. A lot of people is that you have a lot of talents like you're a whole package. You know what I'm saying? You. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how to tell you, but you're the real deal. <laughs> Thank you so much. I truly appreciate it. And like sometimes I'm like, 
am I shooting myself in the foot right now? Like, oh, am I doing a bit too much? And I'm like, maybe, but you know, I wouldn't want it any other way. And everyone's like, like, you've gone like two, three days without sleeping and you're running off of like three energy drinks. Like, what are you doing? They're like, aren't you tired? Like, hello? And I'm like, no, I love every single thing I'm doing. It doesn't feel like work at all. Like when people ask me like, what do I do for work? And I'm like, it's, is it really work though? Like, it's just fun. Like, obviously it's like, okay, yeah, I'm a little bit tired. I could use some more caffeine, but like, just keep going. Like they're, they're a week, um, excuse me, the week of filming first Friday, a portion of it. I'd also done a 24 hour gaming reality TV show. I had gone from three days on set, 12 hours days, back to back to back. Um, to doing schoolwork and battle bots and had gone straight from set to the TV show, had to be up for 26 hours straight for the reality thing. It was like a whole 24 hour thing, Merc's on it. So make sure to check that out when it comes out very soon, within like the next six weeks at least, the first episode should be coming out. Um, and then I'd gone straight to battle bots for work for our show and it was our hundredth show So we had like a whole celebration after and everything and like I had not slept in like three days genuinely and I was like, yeah, my mom's like, are you good? I'm like, I'm great. <laughs> I'm so great. And she's like, are you? And I'm like, yeah, I'm, like, I'm so delusional though But like it's so much fun <laughs> And I'm like sitting there filming part of the show and I'm just like dozing off and they're like Bella Bella wake up and I'm like I'm here like I'm here <laughs> But it's so much fun like it really is the only thing that it's like a downside of that is like it's Does feel like a fever dream and it it's like not hard to remember because I remember but it, it's just I feel like I don't get to enjoy it as much because I am always on the go. So sometimes it's a little bit harder to like just be there in the moment and enjoy it and take it all in, especially being that tired. But like I said, I wouldn't trade it for the world and I love it, everything I do. But ooh. it's crazy. That's, oof, that was deep, that was deep. Oof, I felt it, I felt it. <laughs> you I gotta say, look, this is crazy. So look, you're not sleeping a lot. You're you're on the go how do you keep your mind from going like like feeling so much stress because i know it could be stressful right you're always and people have different methods on how they deal with their own stress what's your thing that helps you um basically you know what i'm saying get get our bella back yeah <laughs> to so... reality <laughs> Um, this is probably not the best answer what anyone is expecting to hear, but, um, work more. Like, I just always have to be doing something. Like, I don't watch TV or movies because, especially with the ADHD, it doesn't help. But, like, I'll be, like, five minutes and I already catch myself, like, on my phone doing emails or checking DMs or trying to post to figure out what I could do next. Uh, for a solid moment, I was going to the gym five to six days a week. And then I, there's always like those waves where I'm just so busy. Like I literally have no time to go at all. So it kind of breaks up that consistency. Um, and then I just got over an injury, which I don't even know how it happened, but I messed something up with my leg and back or whatever. Um, but yeah, I was going to the gym quite a bit, uh, especially throughout filming. Like sometimes I'd get up 6 a.m., go to the gym or go uh, like around midnight. Um, but like honestly, like just working all the time, like sometimes I just, I just feel so accomplished after I get something done that it is like a relief of stress to an extent. I don't know if that's like the best answer. Like I don't know how to explain it, but I just I always have to be doing something. I can't just sit there and be bored. It drives me nuts. I guess like there's too much to do. <laughs> there's something I could be doing. Like or like painting, but I haven't like really done that in a while because I have been busy. Um, but when it comes to like rave season, I love making candy bracelets and pearl or necklaces. And that'll be like my little like break, if you will. But yeah. Oh. Now I'm shocked what you just said. Three things that you said. Two things, two things that you just said that I'm even shocked. So I also have ADHD. I can admit it. And I do get distracted. I'm with you 100 percent I think that, you know, for me, I got five jobs. I'm doing five things at the same time. 
I only sleep like same like you, except I do sleep an hour or two, but you say you don't sleep, you beat me right there. Sometimes. Give, sometimes, sometimes, yeah. <laughs> I'll give you, I give you that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and but like me, I don't I I actually like I'm doing so many things. Like I tell people that in the daytime, I got like my regular job, and at night I'm doing the podcast. Got my comedy skit. I just reached uh 76 episode on my Chucky skit. So I made a little Chuck. I don't know from the last time we talked, I never had it. So I came up with a Chucky um comedy skit called Roomies with Chucky. So basically, Chucky, you know, the killer doll, um, he's my roommate. And I basically we fight for the shower, for the leftovers, anything a roommate will do, right? We fight for the same girl, and it's just so funny. But I do the voiceover, everything, just so I don't lose my acting skills. And I bring in extra characters. You know, I brought in uh, Lilo and Stitch. I didn't do Lilo, but I did Stitch. But <laughs> but it was just so cool. And I feel you. Like I have like a deadline. I gotta hit this. I gotta make this episode. Um, you know, my book that was like one thing that took so much of my time. I had to do it like within six months. I passed my deadline. And um, so I feel you. I feel you. And I'm already working on my second book. So I'm I'm I feel you. So I'm like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like trying to do everything right now. But I, I feel you. I think that us being so young, this is the moment to grind and hustle because we want to get to the point where when we get older, right? We don't have to worry about like money we don't have to worry about anything we can take care of our family we can take care of ourselves and we'll be good the only thing we got to do is make sure you know we brush your teeth you know eat that popcorn <laughs> yes <laughs> um go in our yacht you know so i definitely definitely agree with you i think that it makes us complete like when we do these things we feel full like we feel like we did something like you said you feel like accomplished so i'm with you 100 percent. well congratulations on the book that's amazing that's awesome that's super cool. thank you thank you i i, I do want to share a little something so i did um surprise my mom she had no idea that I was writing the book and i brought it to her and she was like crying and for me you know, I got like happy and emotional because I want to like the way I see it is like I want my mom, but also here's a little, you know, secret between us <laughs> and the fans are going to know too. my mom, when she was married to my father, uh, oh, I actually wrote 100 pages um, in a pen and paper, like old school, and she showed it to my father. And my father burned it in front of her and said, this book, that, basically he said, you're not a good writer and it crushed her dream. She was, you know, she was sad. She cried. And um, I felt like me making the book for her, it was a way to break the curse and to fulfill her dream. So I had to share that. That was, I mean, I, I, I didn't want everybody to see it, but I see it. But yeah, that's a little something I had to share from the heart, girl. But um, but yeah, girl. Well, look, I'm really happy. I got you here, girl. So, look, one last question I want to ask real quick. This is the last, last. If there's anybody who you love to collab with, uh, when it comes down to DJs, who would it be? Okay, How, uh, can I say two people? Oh, this is hard. Okay. Um. So this is kind of who got me into the heavy dubstep um, genre world, whatever you want to call it. He's actually, uh, and I'm not there right now, but he's actually hosting his own festival, Sudden Death. 
I love Sled and Death. I love his music. I was fortunate enough to be able to meet him uh, at one of his shows and, like, get to talk to him. Super cool, funny, like, chill person, especially, like, versus his persona. Um, but yeah, he has Summoning of the Eclipse this weekend. I was gonna go for my birthday, and then I just ended up being booked, but hopefully maybe next year, but his music's great. Um, and then for the ladies in the dubstep world, uh, there's, like, kind of a lot of people that, like, in terms of music would be, like, super cool collaboration, but I'd have to say... I think Lays is pretty sick. She's a DJ producer. I saw her at Excision show back in November, I believe it was. Um, and I've just like watched her grow over time and on social media and her music. And it's just super cool and to see her fan base. But there's so many amazing women and just all over artists in this space. Subtronics, um, he just got married to Level Up and she's also pretty awesome. Um, that's just super cool. It's a great community. Everyone, for the most part, is super loving and supportive. But yeah, sudden death would probably be like one of my number ones. Ooh, ooh. Oh man, if you're hearing it, yeah, yes, if you're hearing what she just said, please have her on your set. Like that would be <laughs> so dope. Please, please, please. It will make our day. Bella, when's your birthday? Is it this Saturday? Uh, no, it's next month, November 17th. So for my birthday, I'm going to Apocalypse. It's, uh, it's, it's going to be its first year. It's an Insomniac, uh, all bass music festival in LA right after Thanksgiving. So me and my best friend are going to go Piper. She's awesome. I got her into raving. Um, and now that's like my rave buddy. So I'm so excited. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Um, I can't wait. Can't wait. Well, look, I'm looking. It up, guys. Guys, this is the Outlet to Reality, the holiest podcast in Vegas and Chicago every Tuesday. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Cha-ching! And by the way, guys, don't forget to check out my book, Shabbat in Chicago, out on Amazon. And y'all know where to find me. I'm on Instagram, YouTube, Spotify, the Outlet to Reality. My Snapchat is Take One Pass It, and my TikTok is at Yakov28. And Bella, where can my fans find you? You can find me on all the big main social media platforms at It's Bella Hue, I-T-S-B-E-L-L-A-H-U-E. Um, and yeah, thank you so very much for having me. It was great to be back. Uh, and that was so much fun. Thank you.